will have to be in isolation until you hear the results yeah. from us, okay? Quest is telling us seven days. Hello. I have been in quarantine for a while now, and I'm afraid for you to see what I look like. It's not great. Are you ready? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, I haven't shaved in about a month. Probably makes real good sounds. It's like ASMR. Hello, oh, Willies. It's me, Big Willie. I'm gonna rub my beard against your face. <laughs> Let me go trim my beard really quick because this is embarrassing. I look homeless. Not that there's anything wrong with being homeless, but looking homeless. Fix it. Are you really gonna trim your beard right now? Uh, yeah. That's good. Chelsea, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen my chin. <laughs> Come back here. I haven't seen my chin in like six years. Come back! <laughs> okay, I gotta fix this. <laughs> new year, new me. Uh, I have some very, very important news to share with everybody. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Today I have some very exciting news to share with you. And, and from what you've seen so far, you, you're like, oh, whatever, you've clickbaited me. Well, no, I have waited for things to be less bad before sharing any of this because it just felt kind of weird. But we have tested positive. Yay! <laughs> We have tested positive for the plague. I don't, I don't want to say it because YouTube's been dinging everybody that uses any of these words in their videos. Chelsea and I have been quarantined for two, three weeks. I think we've been holed up for like three weeks. And my mom uh, and family have been bringing us groceries because we're not supposed to leave the house. At this point, we are allowed to leave the house and we have left the house because this has been going on for about three weeks. And, um, I filmed some of it. I haven't looked at it yet because I think it's a good idea to kind of showcase how potentially serious this could be. I had no symptoms whatsoever. Yay! Here is the doctor's note. This is a joke. This is, that's a joke. This is the actual doctor's note. That is another joke. Because doctors write badly. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the actual results. I have videos of the test. I have videos of the symptoms she was experiencing and the shortness of breath. And, and at one point I was genuinely scared. Breathe in. <coughs> See, that's like half of what you were able to breathe in earlier. <coughs> Why, does it just hurt? Why do you cough? Cause I can't, it hurts. And this whole experience has been an utter nightmare for the both of us because it just has been such a uncoordinated disaster. Like not just because things didn't get done, but information was conveyed to us in a way where it could have been easily misinterpreted. The date is March 14th, 2020. Coronavirus has been affecting the patient very negatively. I don't have coronavirus. As you can see, the patient has become very very uh, angry and dismissive and combative. Earlier, the patient was smearing her own feces uh, across the wall. You're such a liar. <laughs> How's coronavirus treating you? I don't have coronavirus. Yeah, where are we going right now? Urgent care. <laughs> because? I have the flu. <laughs> That's what they all say. The instant she had any symptoms at all, we went to urgent care, drove under the tent. They come out with their wheelie cart with all their stuff on it. They ask a couple of questions. We're gonna swab you for the flu. Is it okay if I film some of this? No, it's not, we don't allow filming. Okay. No, I think, actually no, it's worse than that. Let me rewind a little bit. You pull up and you have to get out of the car and talk to the lady that's sitting outside of urgent care in the parking lot. Whether she's wearing a mask and stuff, but uh, once they sign you up, you go around back in your car, you pull up and you go under the tent. I'll start the flu swab and then um, we'll get that running and then I'll come back out to take vital signs. Oh. Okay, so this is going to go in your nose. Sorry, because we took 
I filmed it anyways. <laughs> how far up their nose did they stick that swab? My eyes are watering. How far up? How far up your nose? Did that they should st tell you. I'm did crying. they? Did she stick it real far up there? Well, they're trying to get like goop. <laughs> <laughs> then they tell you that no, they're not going to test you for Corona. I don't want to say it. They're not going to test you for the V and instead tested her for the flu, which came back negative. That, that was immediate, right? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So the flu test came back negative and they told her she had a cold. So... Do you have coronavirus? No. Do they know for sure you don't have coronavirus? I mean, they're not testing anyone unless they think that you, like, are worth testing. <laughs> You're not worth I'm testing. not sick enough that they think it's worth testing. Do they get mad at me for filming? Yeah, they got really mad. Two people came and yelled at him. Retrospectively, knowing that she was contagious and I was probably contagious even though I had no symptoms, they told her she had a cold and to go home. So we assumed, oh, if, if you test positive for flu, that means that you probably are, or if you didn't test positive, we thought that meant that you would test positive for the flu if you had the V. But I guess that is not the case. The next day, someone that caretaker had been in close contact with called and said they had been tested positive for the V. So our next step is to call her primary care doctor, who then sends us to a different hotline, who then sets up a drive through appointment. Who are you calling? Primary medical. Why? I'm sick. With what? I've been exposed to someone who has coronavirus. You're going to die. You're going to die. So are you then. <laughs> I'm going to die. You killed me. What is your temperature? Uh, the last I took it, it was 99.1. We then sets up a drive through appointment for us to come in the car and, and get swabbed and tested for the V. Oh, I see we dressing up for the doctor's office. Damn, what you wearing? What are those? <laughs> Say bye to caretaker, it's the last time you'll see her. She's gonna die. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> have to be in isolation until you hear the results yeah. from us, okay? Quest is telling us seven days. Okay. But it could be sooner. Okay. Okay. Okay, what about what about me since I've been in contact with her? Uh, if she's positive, you're positive. Okay. Do you want to describe the swab? What do they do? You like tilt your head back and they shove a swab up your nose to get into your like, you know, mucusy area. Into your mucusy area, yeah. But yeah, they really get up in the it's like extremely uncomfortable. I wouldn't say it hurts. It just it makes your eyes water, but it's over quickly. So, I mean, don't be afraid to get it. I'll oh. let you know as soon as we find out, okay. Okay? okay? Up to seven days. Those results took seven days to get back to us. Between being told she had a cold to knowing she had the V took seven or eight days. All, I, I, I just, ugh. It just felt, it felt, it felt like a total disaster of a, of a situation. Basically, you know when you, you like, you, you talk to a professional, you pay them good money and you say, hey, tell me what I need to do. There's no professional. They had no idea. There's misinformation, to, like the wrong kind of test or like mis, or, you give confidence to people by telling them you don't have a, of a, a thing. Oh, you've just got a cold. It's not a big deal when they actually do have it. I mean, do you understand how bad that is for someone, for a doctor to tell you that you have a cold? but we can't test you for the V. I mean, that's insane, right? During the second test, I asked about me. What about me since I've been in contact with her? Uh, if she's positive, you're positive. Okay. If she has it, I have it. I had no symptoms at all whatsoever. Chelsea had pretty bad symptoms a couple days after doing the test to the point where I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't know who I was supposed to call because you call a primary care doctor on the weekends, no one picks up. At 50% at lung capacity, am I supposed to take her to an ER? But like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. No idea if either of us even test positive for it because now it's like, we need to go to the ER. You go to the ER, do you test? Do you, well, we got tested, but we're not positive. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, the whole thing just is insane to me. In the end, we are both fine. I experienced nothing. How would you describe your experience with it? I'm really busy right now. So what was the question? How, how would you describe your symptoms in general? For me, it started out with 
really intense body aches, like the worst body pain I've ever had before. And then from there, I got a dry cough and the shortness of breath. And then I started getting fevers. And I would say what sucked was this, you had all of them at the same time and it was for about a week straight. And it was pretty scary not being able to breathe well. And I didn't, I didn't want to freak you out because I really didn't want to go to the hospital. So I tried to downplay it, but I was kind of scared. Actually? Yeah. Here's the whole timeline, feeling symptoms, going to urgent care, getting tested for the flu, being told she had a cold, being told she was in contact with someone who tested positive, went and got tested, waited a week, phone confirmation that she tested positive, letter confirmation that she tested negative, and then we called them again and were reconfirmed that she did test positive. So, yep. That's it, that's the whole story. Two out of 10 would not recommend contracting the V.